Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin was a Russian Soviet pilot and cosmonaut. He was the first human to journey into outer space, when his Vostok spacecraft completed an orbit of the Earth on April 12, 1961. Gagarin became an international celebrity, and was awarded many medals and titles, including Hero of the Soviet Union, the nation's highest honor. Vostok 1 marked his only space flight, but he served as backup crew to the Soyuz 1 mission. Gagarin later became deputy training director of the Cosmonaut Training Center outside Moscow, which was later named after him. Gagarin died in 1968 when the MiG-15 training jet he was piloting crashed. Early life and education, Yuri Gagarin was born in the village of Klushino, near Gzhatsk, on March 9, 1934. His parents worked on a collective farm, Alexey Ivanovich Gagarin as a carpenter and bricklayer, and Anna Timofeevna Gagarina as a milkmaid. Yuri was the third of four children, older brother Valentin, older sister Zoya, and younger brother Boris. Like millions of people in the Soviet Union, the Gagarin family suffered during Nazi occupation in World War II. Klushino was occupied in November 1941 during the German advance on Moscow, and an officer took over the Gagarin residence. The family was allowed to build a mud hut, approximately 3 by 3 meters inside, on the land behind their house, where they spent a year and nine months until the end of the occupation. His two older siblings were deported by the Germans to Poland for slave labor in 1943, and did not return until after the war in 1945. In 1946, the family moved to Gzhatsk, where Gagarin continued his secondary education. Another version of Gagarin's biography suggests that his family fled east to the Ural Mountains before German army reached Gzhatsk in 1941, and they returned only when the war ended. At the age of 16 in 1950, Gagarin entered into an apprenticeship as a foundryman at the Lyubatsy steel plant near Moscow, and also enrolled at a local young workers' school for seventh grade evening classes. After graduating in 1951 from both the seventh grade and the vocational school, he was selected for further training at the Saratov Industrial Technical School, where he studied tractors. While in Saratov, Gagarin volunteered for weekend training as a Soviet air cadet at a local flying club, where he learned to fly a Euro at first in a biplane and later in a Yak-18 trainer. He also earned extra money as a part-time dock laborer on the Volga River. Career in the Soviet Air Force After graduating from the technical school in 1955, the Soviet Army drafted Gagarin. On a recommendation, Gagarin was sent to the 1st Kolob Air Force Pilot School in Orenburg, and soloed in a MiG-15 in 1957. While there he met Valentina Ivanovna Goryokheva, a medical technician graduate of the Orenburg Medical School. They were married on November 7, 1957, the same day Gagarin graduated from Orenburg. Post-graduation, he was assigned to the Luostari Air Base in Murmansk Oblast, close to the Norwegian border, where terrible weather made flying risky. He became a lieutenant in the Soviet Air Forces on November 5, 1957. On November 6, 1959 he received the rank of senior lieutenant. Career in the Soviet Space Program, Selection in Training In 1960, after much searching and a selection process, Yuri Gagarin was chosen with 19 other pilots for the Soviet Space Program. Gagarin was further selected for an elite training group known as the Sochi 6, from which the first cosmonauts of the Vostok program would be chosen. Gagarin and other prospective candidates were subjected to experiments designed to test physical and psychological endurance. He also underwent training for the upcoming flight. Out of the 20 selected, the eventual choices for the first launch were Gagarin and Amantitov due to their performance during training sessions as well as their physical characteristics. A Euro space was limited in the small Vostok cockpit and both men were rather short. Gagarin was 1.57 meters tall. In August 1960, when Gagarin was one of 20 possible candidates, an Air Force doctor evaluated his personality as follows. Modest. Embarrasses when his humor gets a little too racy. High degree of intellectual development evident in Yuri. Fantastic memory. 
distinguishes himself from his colleagues by his sharp and far-ranging sense of attention to his surroundings. A well-developed imagination. Quick reactions. Persevering, prepares himself painstakingly for his activities and training exercises, handles celestial mechanics and mathematical formulae with ease as well as excels in higher mathematics. Does not feel constrained when he has to defend his point of view if he considers himself right. Appears that he understands life better than a lot of his friends. Gagarin was also a favorite candidate by his peers. When the 20 candidates were asked to anonymously vote for which other candidate they would like to see as the first to fly, all but three chose Gagarin. One of these candidates, Yevany Krunov, believed that Gagarin was very focused, and was demanding of himself and others when necessary. Gagarin kept physically fit throughout his life, and was a keen sportsman. Cosmonaut Valery Bykovsky wrote, Service in the Air Force made us strong, both physically and morally. All of us cosmonauts took up sports and PT seriously when we served in the Air Force. I know that Yuri Gagarin was fond of ice hockey. He liked to play goalkeeper. I don't think I am wrong when I say that sports became a fixture in the life of the cosmonauts. In addition to being a keen ice hockey player, Gagarin was also a basketball fan, and coached the Saratov Industrial Technical School team, as well as being a referee. Vostok 1 on April 12, 1961, aboard the Vostok 3 Ka-3, Gagarin became both the first human to travel into space, and the first to orbit the Earth. His call sign was KEDR. In his post-flight report, Gagarin recalled his experience of space flight, having been the first human in space. The feeling of weightlessness was somewhat unfamiliar compared with Earth conditions. Here, you feel as if you are hanging in a horizontal position in straps. You feel as if you are suspended. Following the flight, Gagarin told the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev that during re-entry he had whistled the tune The Motherland Hears, The Motherland Knows. The first two lines of the song are, The Motherland Hears, The Motherland Knows Where Her Son Flies in the Sky. This patriotic song was written by Dmitry Shostakovich in 1951 with words by Yevgeny Dolmatovsky. Some sources have claimed that Gagarin commented during the flight, I don't see any god up here. However, no such words appear in the verbatim record of his conversations with Earth-based stations during the space flight. In a 2006 interview, Gagarin's friend Colonel Valentin Petrov stated that the cosmonaut never said such words, and that the quote originated from Nikita Khrushchev's speech at the plenum of the Central Committee of the CPSU about the state's anti-religion campaign, saying Gagarin flew into space, but didn't see any god there. Petrov also said that Gagarin had been baptized into the Orthodox Church as a child, and a 2011 FOMA magazine article quoted the rector of the Orthodox Church in Star City saying, Gagarin baptized his elder daughter Yelena shortly before his space flight and his family used to celebrate Christmas and Easter and keep icons in the house. After Vostok 1 After the flight, Gagarin became a worldwide celebrity, touring widely abroad. He visited Italy, Germany, Canada, Brazil, Japan, Egypt and Finland to promote the Soviet Union's accomplishment of putting the first human in space. He visited the United Kingdom three months after the Vostok 1 mission, going to London and Manchester. The sudden rise to fame took its toll on Gagarin. While acquaintances say Gagarin had been a sensible drinker, his touring schedule placed him in social situations where he was always expected to drink. Gagarin was also reportedly caught by his wife in a room with another woman, a nurse named Anna who had aided him after a boating incident earlier in the day, at a Black Sea resort in September 1961. He attempted to escape by leaving through a window and jumping off her second-floor balcony, hitting his face on a cobstone and leaving a permanent scar above his left eyebrow. In 1962, he began serving as a deputy to the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union and was elected to the Central Committee of the Young Communist League. He later returned to Star City, the cosmonaut facility, where he spent seven years working on designs for a reusable spacecraft. He became a lieutenant colonel of the Soviet Air Forces on June 12, 1962, and received the rank of colonel on November 6, 1963. 
Soviet officials tried to keep him away from any flights, being worried of losing their hero in an accident. Gagarin was backup pilot for his friend Vladimir Komarov in the Soyuz 1 flight, which was launched despite Gagarin's protests that additional safety precautions were necessary. When Komarov's flight ended in a fatal crash, Gagarin was permanently banned from training for and participating in further space flights. Gagarin had become deputy training director of the Star City Cosmonaut Training Base. At the same time, he began to requalify as a fighter pilot. Death, on March 27, 1968, while on a routine training flight from Kkolovsky Air Base, he and flight instructor Vladimir Syriogen died in a MiG-15 UTI crash near the town of Kurzge. The bodies of Gagarin and Syriogen were cremated and the ashes were buried in the walls of the Kremlin on Red Square. Gagarin was survived by his wife Valentina, and daughters Yelena and Galina. Yelena Yuryevna Gagarina, Yuri's elder daughter, is an art historian who has worked as the director general of the Moscow Kremlin Museum since 2001. His younger daughter, Galina Yuryevna Gagarina, is department chair and a professor of economics at Plekin at Russian University of Economics in Moscow. Cause of jet crash The cause of the crash that killed Gagarin is not entirely certain, and has been subject to speculation about conspiracy theories over the ensuing decades. Soviet documents declassified in March 2003 showed that the KGB had conducted their own investigation of the accident, in addition to one government and two military investigations. The KGB's report dismissed various conspiracy theories, instead indicating that the actions of airbase personnel contributed to the crash. The report states that an air traffic controller provided Gagarin with outdated weather information, and that by the time of his flight, conditions had deteriorated significantly. Ground crew also left external fuel tanks attached to the aircraft. Gagarin's planned flight activities needed clear weather and no outboard tanks. The investigation concluded that Gagarin's aircraft entered a spin either due to a bird strike or because of a sudden move to avoid another aircraft. Because of the out-of-date weather report, the crew believed their altitude to be higher than it actually was, and could not react properly to bring the MiG-15 out of his spin. Another theory, advanced by the original crash investigator in 2005, hypothesizes that a cabin air vent was accidentally left open by the crew or the previous pilot, leading to oxygen deprivation and leaving the crew incapable of controlling the aircraft. A similar theory, published in Air and Space magazine, is that the crew detected the open vent and followed procedure by executing a rapid dive to a lower altitude. This dive caused them to lose consciousness and crash. On April 12, 2007, the Kremlin vetoed a new investigation into the death of Gagarin. Government officials said that they saw no reason to begin a new investigation. In April 2011, documents from a 1968 commission set up by the Central Committee of the Communist Party to investigate the accident were declassified. Those documents revealed that the commission's original conclusion was that Gagarin or Syriogen had maneuvered sharply either to avoid a weather balloon, leading the jet into a supercritical flight regime and to its stalling in complex meteorological conditions, or to avoid entry into the upper limit of the first layer of cloud cover. In his 2004 book Two Sides of the Moon, Alexei Leonov, who was part of a state commission established to investigate the death in 1968, recounts that he was flying a helicopter in the same area that day when he heard two loud booms in the distance. Corroborating other theories, his conclusion is that a Sukhoi jet was flying below its minimum allowed altitude, and without realizing it because of the terrible weather conditions, he passed within 10 or 20 meters of Yuri and Saregin's plane while breaking the sound barrier. The resulting turbulence would have sent the MiG into an uncontrolled spin. Leonov believes the first boom he heard was that of the jet breaking the sound barrier, and the second was Gagarin's plane crashing. In a June 2013 interview with Russian television network RT, Leonov said that a declassified report on the incident revealed the presence of a second, unauthorized Su-15 flying in the area. Leonov states that this aircraft had descended to 450 meters and that, while running after burners, the aircraft reduced its echelon at a distance of 10 euro 15 meters in the clouds, passing close to Gagarin, 
turning his plane and thus sending it into a tailspin a euro a deep spiral, to be precise a euro at a speed of 750 km per hour. As a condition of being allowed to discuss the report, however, Leonov was required to not disclose the name of the other pilot, who was reported to be 80 years old and in poor health. Legacy and Tributes Legacy, aside from his short stature at 1.57 meters, one of Gagarin's most notable traits was his smile. Many commented on how Gagarin's smile gained the attention of crowds on the frequent tours he did in the months after the Vostok 1 mission success. Gagarin also garnered a reputation as an adept public figure. When he visited Manchester in the United Kingdom, it was pouring rain. However, Gagarin insisted that the car had remained back so that the cheering crowds could catch a glimpse of him. Gagarin stated, If all these people have turned out to welcome me and can stand in the rain, so can I. Gagarin refused an umbrella and remained standing in his open top Bentley so that the cheering crowds could still see him. Sergei Korolev, one of the masterminds behind the early years of the Soviet space program, later said that Gagarin possessed a smile that lit up the Cold War. Tributes Gagarin was also honored by the American space program during Apollo 11 when astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin left a memorial satchel containing medals commemorating Gagarin and fellow cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov on the surface of the Moon. On August 2, 1971, Apollo 15 astronauts David Scott and James Irwin left the fallen astronaut on the surface of the Moon as a memorial to all the American astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts that died in the space race with Yuri Gagarin listed among 14 others. There were two commemorative coins issued in the Soviet Union to honor the 20th and 30th anniversaries of his flight, one ruble coin and three ruble coin. In 2001, to commemorate the 40th anniversary of Gagarin's flight, a series of four coins bearing his likeness was issued in Russia, two ruble coin, three ruble coin, ten ruble coin, and one hundred ruble coin. In 2011, Russia issued a 1,000 ruble coin and 3 ruble coin to mark the 50th anniversary of his flight. Gagarin Ryan in the Sevastopol city was named after him during the Soviet Union. In 2008, the Continental Hockey League named their championship trophy the Gagarin Cup. In a 2010 Space Foundation survey, Gagarin was ranked as the number six most popular space hero, tied with Star Trek's fictional Captain James T. Kirk. In January 2011, Armenian airline Armavia named their first Sukhoi Superjet 100 in Gagarin's honor. On July 14, 2011, a statue of Yuri Gagarin was unveiled at the Admiralty Arch end of the mall in London, opposite the permanent sculpture of James Cook. It is a copy of the statue outside Gagarin's former school in Lyubatsi. In 2013, the London statue was moved to a permanent location outside the Royal Observatory in Greenwich and was publicly unveiled on March 7, 2013. 50th Anniversary The 50th anniversary of Gagarin's journey into space was marked in 2011 by tributes around the world. A film titled First Orbit was shot from the International Space Station, combining the original flight audio with footage of the route taken by Gagarin. The Russian, American and Italian Expedition 27 crew aboard the ISS sent a special video message to wish the people of the world a happy Euro's night, wearing shirts with an image of Gagarin. Swiss-based German watchmaker Bernhard Lederer created a limited edition of 50 Gagarin tour billions to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's flight. The launch of Soyuz TMA-21 on April 4, 2011 was devoted to the 50th anniversary of the first manned space mission. Honors and awards, this article incorporates information from the equivalent article on the Russian Wikipedia. Jubilee Medal 40 Years of the Armed Forces of the USSR, Hero of the Soviet Union, Order of Lenin, Hero of Socialist Labor, Hero of Socialist Labor, Order of Georgi Dimitrov, Order of the Star, Second Class, Cross of Grunwald, First Class, Pilot Cosmonaut of the USSR, the First Commander of the Order Playa Gyron, for achievements in aeronautics, Order of the Southern Cross, Order of the Flag of the Hungarian Republic, First Class with Diamonds, Honored Master of Sports of the USSR, Military Pilot First Class, 
Gold Medal of the British Society for Interplanetary Travel, 1961, Honorary. Sivarovitz, Order of the Nile, Order of the African Star, Hero of Labor, Gold Medal of the Austrian Government, 1962, Honorary President of the Soviet Cuban Friendship Society, Honorary Member of the Society, the Finland Soviet Union, Order of Karl Marx. Jubilee Medal 20 Years of Victory in the Great Patriotic War 1941 Euro 1945, Medal for Impeccable Service, 3rd Class, Honorary Member of the International Academy of Astronautics, Order of Clement Gottwald, Jubilee Medal 50 Years of the Armed Forces of the USSR, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky Gold Medal for Outstanding Work in the Field of Interplanetary Communications, Medal of de Laval, Gold Medal and Diploma Man in Space, the Italian Association of Space, Gold Medal for Outstanding Difference, and the Royal Aero Club Diploma, Sweden, Medal of Columbus, Gold Medal of St. Denis, Gold Medal Award for Courage of the Fund Metsotti, 2007, and others. Yuri Gagarin was elected an honorary citizen of the following cities, USSR Kaluga, Novozybkov, Klintsi, Novokask, Lyubatsi, Zumkite, Smolensk, Vinnytsia, Sevastopol, Saratov, Komsomolsk on Amur, Tumin, Russia, Orenburg, Bulgaria, Sofia, Pernik, Plovdiv, Greece, Athens, Cyprus, Famagusta, Limassol, France, St. Denis, Czechoslovakia, Trina Jornsk to Plice. He was also awarded the Golden Keys to the gates of the cities of Cairo and Alexandria. See also Cosmonautics Day a Euro holiday celebrated in Russia and other former USSR countries on April 12th, Cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin a Euro Soviet space research ship, Yuri's Night a Euro international celebration held every April 12th. References Notes Sources, Basin, Mark. Kelly, Katrina, Ed Soviet and Post-Soviet Identities. Cambridge Cambridge University Press PPA 140 Euro 141. ISBN A 1107011175. Gavrilin, Vyacheslav Mikhailovich. Sportsman of the Soviet Army. Moscow, Novosti Press Agency. OCLC A 23374154. Siddiqui, I see Fay Challenge to Apollo. The Soviet Union and the Space Race, 1945 Euro 1974. Washington, D.C. NASA. OCLC A 48909645. SP 2000-4408 A Part 1, Part 2. Further reading, Jenks, Andrew L. The Cosmonaut Who Couldn't Stop Smiling, The Life and Legend of Yuri Gagarin. Northern Illinois University Press. ISBN A 978-0-87580-447-7A, Cole, Michael D. Vostok 1, First Human in Space. Springfield, New Jersey, Enlo. ISBN A 0-89490-541-4A, Doran, Jamie. Bisney, Piers. Starman, The Truth Behind the Legend of Yuri Gagarin. London, Bloomsbury. ISBN A 0 7475 External links, Gagarin Start a Euro short video by Roscosmos including the preparation, Gagarin's flight, and Gagarin back on Earth, episode 47 of astrotokook.org recording from the unveiling of Yuri Gagarin statue event in London on July 14, 2011, rare B&W video with some audio of Yuri Gagarin in Manchester July 12, 1961, feature film on YouTube First Orbit from firstorbit.org, Yuri Gagarin a Euro the first to fly, Gagarin's photos, Yuri Gagarin, first man in space. A Euro slideshow by Life magazine, obituary, NY Times, March 28, 1968 Yuri Gagarin killed as test plane falls, Russian, 
TH registered trademark N Euro TH TH to the first TH TH degree TH cubed TH degree N Euro TH TH one half TH TH three quarters N Euro TH three quarters TH cubed TH degree TH square TH TH three quarters N TH one quarter TH three quarters N A A Euro his book in Russian, Russian, photo, audio and video with Yuri Gagarin, online version of CD created to his 70th Aniv. On the homepage of Russian State Archive for Scientific Technical Documentation. Russian, article in online encyclopedia of cosmonautics A lot of information about the first human's flight to space. Russian, Gagarin's flight 3D visualization A Euro contains the real record of his conversation with the Earth during the space flight. Russian, annotated transcript of Gagarin's radio conversations with ground stations, starting two hours before launch. Gagarina Euro detailed biography at Encyclopedia Astronautica, list of Gagarin statues, Finnish, 11 minutes long interview of Yuri Gagarin by the Finnish Broadcasting Company in 1961, Yuri's Night A Euro World Space Party, 50th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's flight into space, Yuri Gagarin's Clash I Know, forgotten home of space legend, Yuri Gagarin at Find a Grave, Yuri Gagarin footage from 1961, Yuri Gagarin, Yuri Gagarin photographs, Soviet man in space is available for free download at the Internet Archive, more, first pictures. Soviets hail space hero, 196,119 inches is available for free download at the Internet Archive, more.